We arrived in Wensleydale in the rain, which largely became the hallmark of our stay. The little village of Apperset, nestling in the upper reaches of the valley, looked rather forbidding with its grey stone cottages clustered together beside the River Ure. We were told that it used to be a close-knit Moravian community. Inside our cosy cottage, we could at least dry out and keep warm. We visited first the picturesque Church of St Margaret, The town is a popular tourist centre with plenty of cafes, restaurants and souvenir shops to cater for all tastes. A craft fair in the market house happened to be open, so we entered and found a wide range of stalls selling locally made products. Some intricate decoupage caught our eye. This work, my work, is called traditional decoupage. It's a paper craft that originated in Venice in the 13th century. The Venetians did it to imitate lacquerware, which coming from China, which was rather expensive. So they did their own versions, painting little motives, decorating things and lacquering them. Then it went through Europe to France. The French called it découpage. And uh, it, it finished up in England during Queen Victoria's reign. So it's a very old craft. My work is very similar. It's not something you can make in a couple of days. First of all, the article is painted. Uh, six coats of black paint on here. Then I cut out all the, this. I use flowers on some. This is fruit. This paper is Italian from a company called Tassotti who specialize in decoupage paper. I, I do the design and when I've got it all cut out and the design in place, I start varnishing about 20 layers to give it a lacquered look, which it was meant to have in the first place when the Venetians did it. On the other side of the hall was a stall selling homemade rag dolls. Sad it's a Cinderella. Like Cinderella, so she's got a sad face and she's wearing patches and work clothes. And then turn her up the other way and she's got her party dress and her happy face. <laughs> it's the rags end, looking a bit sad, and that's the happy end. Crossing to the other side of the dale, we drove up a very steep hill. This is regarded as one of the most challenging hills for cyclists and was chosen for the Tour de France in 2014. It's also formed part of the Tour de Yorkshire and has been used in BBC's Top Gear to test drive new cars. The last green valley gives way to wild, windswept moorland. The northern end of the pass descends into Swaledale.
in the tranquil village of Keld, we met the minister of the well-kept United Reform Church. Welcome to Keld Chapel here at the head of Swaledale. The, has, there has been a chapel on this site for centuries, but it fell into disrepair until a minister called Edward Stillman decided that he wanted to bring the gospel back to the people of Keld. So he restored the chapel. And then uh, the time went on, and this chapel still has services every other week here, whatever the congregation. We might just have one, like today, but sometimes with baptisms, we can have 70 or 80 people filling this chapel. It is a place of pilgrimage for many people too. What a difference it made to see the grey stone villages in the sunshine. On our way home, we stopped at the Hardraw Force, which is privately owned. On first sighting, we were a little disappointed, as it didn't appear to have much force about it. In fact, it's England's highest drop waterfall, at just under a hundred feet. With such stunning views to be had on a fine early June evening, we followed one of the two tributaries of the River Ewer up to the hills. Here, curlews could be seen wheeling overhead and even a family of oyster catchers nestling near the stream. Another day, we set off from our cottage to visit the magnificent Ribble Head Viaduct, only 14 miles away. This was a first for us. It took five years to build, with 2,300 workers. Over a hundred lost their lives in the construction. The Settle to Carlisle line first opened for passengers in 1876. British Rail proposed closing it in the 1980s, but following fierce public lobbying, the line was reprieved after completing much needed repairs. Another damp morning suggested an indoor visit, and from the internet we learnt that the Hawes rope makers were highly rated. The entrance was through a shop selling local crafts. Unfortunately, there were no hands-on demonstrations that day, but we were able to peer into sections of the factory that were humming with activity. Better still was meeting up with the owner. It's traditionally made rope, and the longest ropes we could make here until last year were 25 metres inside our building, or very occasionally opening a door to go across the car park. But then we began to make braid, which is plaited on machines, so while the machines are working away on their own, we can be making the traditional rope walking up and down, and that allowed us to introduce more colour, or mixed colours, or for example in this dog lead, lots of colours. So gradually we extended the range of products we could make, the colours and fibres used, which would depend on the 
use the product was being uh, the function for the end user and sometimes we even put a pretty colour on the outside but a strong functional core on the braid which allows it to be used for a wider range of products or in this case a bigger, range, a bigger size of dog which needs a thicker rope or braid, dog lead. And that's not got any of The coils of rope we make, this is quite a small one, but it's 220 metres, but anything with a bigger diameter is too heavy for, to me to lift, for me to lift. Now this, interestingly, we've tied it up with a bit of orange cord, which we make to go on the emergency alarms in hospitals and old people's homes. So you might have a white one normally, but when it's an emergency alarm, it has to be red or orange, and we make that. But we've now bought a new machine which will extend the length of rope we can make to 220 metres. That is a traditional coil and it therefore brings us to the opportunity for new markets. So we're a working rope maker, we're open to visitors and how often can you get so close to see a very ordinary product like rope actually being made? In the remaining days, we had to snatch the odd hour or so between the showers to see several recommended sites. The Dales Countryside Museum, a short walk to the Cotter Force near Apposet, And on our way home, a stop at Aysgarth to see the renowned falls swollen by the recent heavy rain. And what about the Wensleydale Creamery? Well, that will have to wait for another time.